Economist Anne Pettifor is the director of Prime Economics, and she was in Argentina when the crisis there broke in 2001. And she joins us now from London. Anne, welcome to the program. Hi. Good afternoon. Now, Argentina. Good uh, well, it's good evening here. Good morning to you. Um, Argentina first. In, uh, in terms of lessons learned, what do you see as the parallels between where Greece is now, if it, if it goes into default, and what happened with Argentina? Well, both countries were persuaded to join a global money lending system, which is designed in the interest of the money lenders and not in the interest of these quite poor countries. And both countries were persuaded to give up their currency and hitch their currency instead to a foreign currency. And in both cases, that's proved disastrous. Um, but in both cases, uh, there is the hope of recovery mm -hmm. if they regain their economic, their monetary sovereignty. That's what happened in Argentina. And despite what your contributor said a minute ago, growth in Argentina rebounded by 8% after it had defaulted. The same applied to, to, to Russia and to Indonesia and to South Korea, as you've mentioned. So, so, so there is hope yes. when you get out of the grip of the global money lenders. So good news eventually. But I, I noticed that uh, you've just retweeted um, an open letter that you wrote to the people of Greece late last year saying um, yes. to, to, uh, to, to, to tell them to restore the drachma, really. And you, you say, yes. and I quote, you must understand that it is private wealth that needs Greece. Greece does not yes. need private wealth. What was What's the philosophy behind that? Well, the point is that yesterday, for example, Greece paid or is, is said to have paid 458 million euros to speculators. That's all they are, gamblers on the international capital markets. It wasn't Greek money. It was our money. It was taxpayers' money provided by what are called, is called the Troika, which is the IMF and the ECB. Uh, which are official, if you like, uh, in the sense that they taxpayer-backed institutions. They've put some money into an, what's called an escrow account and used that to pay the speculators on behalf of Greece. So what's happening at the moment is that money has been mobilized from people like me uh, to pay gamblers in the international capital markets and to punish Greece. Greece needs 458 million uh, euros, far more than these speculators do. But we're not, we're not supporting Greece. We're supporting the speculators. That, that and repayment, so Greece... Anne, can I interrupt? That, that yes. repayment was, uh, yes. was for, for a floating rate note, wasn't it? It was for a bond that, that, uh, that actually should have, should have been part of the, uh, the pri private uh, refinancing. But they held out, didn't they? Yes. They refused to be they, part these of it. Were, these, these were bondholders who said, let the taxpayers take a, a haircut, which we did as part of the official creditors to, to Greece two months ago. But we, we're not going to obey market forces and take a loss. We expect the taxpayers to keep paying us. We expect taxpayer-funded institutions to maintain our gains, and we don't expect to make losses. Now, that is a breakdown, if you like, of the market system in, inter in the international financial system. Here we are, in uh, taxpayer-backed institutions backing the market when the market has failed. Mm. Um, so the point is this, this is a deeply dysfunctional financial system being held up by subsidies from, from taxpayers and is wrong. So I, I now understand we already have Greeks pulling euros in, in quite some amount out of the country's banks. We've got the Spanish yeah. Prime Minister saying it would be a major error for Greece to leave the euro. You've got Spanish bonds almost touching 6.5% uh, yields, Italy up near 6%. What should be done now? Well, my view is that this is scaremongering, that if um, Greece withdraws from the euro, she will withdraw from this corset, if you like, this barbaric relic and we'll then have a mega competitive currency. Now, Greece doesn't have a lot to sell on the global markets, but she does have lemons, oil and, and yogurt. If I was an investor, I'd be investing in that, those sectors right now because Greece is going to become extraordinarily competitive relative to, her, uh, to, her, uh, to, to Spain and to Portugal and so on. And she will slowly begin to recover. She will invent new currencies. And, she and there, will will have be to there will be people around who will be willing to go in after a lot of investors will have lost their shirts. There'll be other people willing to go in quite soon, you think, to pick up on this. 
Of course, because she will have a competitive currency. She'll be in a different situation. She'll be, there's going to be chaos and there's going to be a lot of pain and a lot of suffering between now and, say, in a year or two's time. But I would give Greece about 18 months to two years before things will start. People are amazingly inventive. We found this in Argentina. People invented their own currencies. They found ways of getting by. You know, money only matters because it enables you and I to do business. We can carry on doing business without the financial speculators. Believe me, we really can. And when we do, we become inventive, we become innovative, and I expect right. that to happen in Greece as much as it did in Argentina. And Petafort, very interesting to get those views from you. Thank you so much for joining us from London. Thank you.